The Lauren Agee case was hastily closed by authorities, but many questions remain. Come behind the curtain with private investigator Sheila Waisaki as she uncovers the truth about what happened to Lauren. This is Without Warning. Warning. The following episode contains details about sexual violence and elements that are graphic in nature. On the last episode of Without Warning Podcast, you suffered through Jeremy Taylor talking to Sherry and Michael Smith. I tried to break it up so you could listen to the full conversation and skip my commentary, or you could just listen to my commentary, or you could listen to the entire thing. A lot of listeners reached out to me over that audio. I believe it's really important for me to put that out there so you, the listeners, can understand what the family went through to get the basic information. Their daughter was dead. They didn't have anybody working to find answers. It was obvious that Jeremy Taylor had no desire to help this family. On this episode, you're going to hear Jeremy Taylor again talk to the family on the 31st of August, a month after Lauren's body was found. Listen to him carefully. It is astounding, astounding tape to me. Let me know what you think. I set it up the same way as I did before. The full conversation from start to finish, you can just listen to that. The second portion is me talking through the audio of Jeremy Taylor. Now prepare yourself. This is hard to listen to, and I am sure you're going to be screaming. Here we go. Hey, Jeremy, we've got you on speaker, so we can <clears throat> both talk. Um, just uh, seemed like a lot of things happening last night that we just kind of were, were getting some uh, privy to, and we just wanted to let, I don't know, just, I, I did send you an email last night that said, hey, go ahead and sit down. I just sent you an email last night just about, you know, the guy at the boat dock named Harry. Elder. Elder. He still said, you know, I know you said you talked to him, but he's saying he hadn't talked to you, but uh, and maybe what he means is he's got some more to tell you. I don't know, but he's Okay. Got a lot to say, uh, and his wife has a lot to say as well. Yeah. Okay. And I will. Then, go ahead. I'll, I'll be going down there in a few minutes and talking with him. Okay. Um, also, you know, Harry was talking about, and he said, you know, again, we're just, you told us to, to call you when we find things out. And he said, yes, Warm, Warm was pulled out of the water with pink bottoms on it, pink swimming trunk bottoms. Well, she didn't even take swimming trunk. She didn't take pink bottoms. She had black bottoms. She didn't have pink bottoms. Um, don't know where she would have got those. That's a, it's a real question that maybe that's something you knew or didn't know. I don't know, but I guess that's why we were so concerned with what she was found in. I think you said it was pink and, and Sherry was asking. She thought it was pink. The report that came shorts. with the hot from the hospital that described what Lauren was wearing, which was a leopard bra, black shirt, um, and then pink shorts or pink, pink bottoms. Well, her pink uh-huh. shorts are here at my house. So what was she wearing when she was pulled out of the water? What the, what that says. Okay. But that she didn't own those. That's, that's, that's a question we have. She didn't own pink bottoms, so where'd they come from? She never wore pink bottoms because she thought they made her fat. She only wore black. And if she was sleeping, she wouldn't be sleeping in... No, she w- if she was uh, sleeping in a hammock or whatever, she would have some kind of shorts or something on because she's highly allergic to mosquitoes. There's mm-hmm. no way she would sleep in, in uh, bathing suit bottoms. And also, I sent you an email on this, That's too. Safe. Go ahead. They're, they're not... They're not bathing suit bottoms. Well, she doesn't own any pink shorts. The only ones that she has are here at my in my position. I buy all of her clothes. She has no job. There's nothing she can do without me buying stuff. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that she was found in pink shorts? 
that that's what the uh, that, all that stuff that you just read is what she had on. Well, he said she had pink bathing suit bottoms on. No. Okay. I don't know. How, number one, I don't know how you'd know because he didn't see her body. I, I, he said he did see her body. He said he was the second person on, uh, that found her. Because he wouldn't show me where the body was. This is yeah. Harry but, Elder. But, but, yes. He, he's also the one that said this was a 10-year-old kid. But when they called this in, this came out as a 10-year-old. Right. Because you could... you. I don't mean to get graphic, but you couldn't see anything from her but the top of her torso. The rest of it was underwater. I'm just telling and, you what he said. He said she had on yeah. pink bottoms. Yeah. But they wasn't bathing suit shorts. Bathing suit bottoms. And he, and he if he if he seen her, he seen her from a distance. He didn't see her out of the water. He didn't see her. He seen what, what when the detective got there, she was still in the water. And and the, we have pictures of that, and it looks like a, a small child. So, I mean... Well, just go talk him to him to, today, because he has just a totally different perspective. He's just acting like he's got a ton to say and nobody to say it to. So I was like, well, let me call and, Jeremy. And so does D. And Dee, his wife as well. Okay, then there was another, uh, Evan. Shelton. Shelton. Evan. And he, yes. He said he hadn't talked to anybody. Um, no police? He, he probably had. He hasn't talked to me. Uh, if okay. he has talked to somebody, it's not me. Well, I gave you his phone number. He wants you to call him. He just said he okay. had a lot of information to say as well, not so much on the time that she left, but at her, at her mental state when she left. He said she, was, she wasn't hammered. She wasn't drunk. She was fine. And I just think that's important uh, going up there, and I know the toxology will, will say... Uh, s- mm-hmm. stuff as well so I mean I get that but I'm just it, I just thought it was important or it should be important that that he know that another thing that came up is that everybody has left for Florida I mean it is a mass exodus uh, of, of Nashville Tennessee I called Vanderbilt this morning and they said she Hannah Hannah has left she turned in her notice a week ago and just outright quit and said that she was moving to another state uh, all uh-huh. over Instagram, all over stuff. Everybody's got trailers, and Aaron coming to meet you. That's from Chris Stout. Aaron meets you. And I don't, is Briggs it big... posted on his Instagram, which I'm going to send to you in here a little bit, um, that said new life, and he's driving uh, a vehicle heading out with them to Florida. Don't know if he's leaving for good, but that looks, you know, it just... I. We were pretty sure that Aaron and Hannah were, and now we'd heard that Chris Stout was moving to Florida as well, and we'd heard... Well, I know Briggs has been in Florida. He He was in Gulf Shores, yes, with his family. I've talked to him uh, a couple of three times, and he has been in Florida twice, I know, that I've talked to him. Right. And I I keep telling him, you know... (laughs) When you coming back? When you coming back? And he come back. He's like, "Listen, man, I'm coming back then, and I'm going right back." So, you know, I don't, I don't know. I got a statement from him over the phone, but it's not anything formal because I can't find him. But his Instagram he, uh, post yesterday said hashtag New Life. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and you said this wouldn't hinder the case any, but I'm just telling you, they're all running like scared bunnies. So. Um, I, you know, I just, again, red flags, questions. Well, I do, I do know they had some of this planned before this happened. Uh, Um, And how can you verify that? Not not, not all of them did, but I know at least one of them planning to leave before this even happened. Before Lauren's death? Yes. Do you have proof of that or just hearsay? It's hearsay. It ain't rock solid or nothing, but, I mean, from the looks of things, when I went to their house, it was, they was packing. That was the next, that was the day, yeah, the next day. After the, after the, the death? After the death, yes. So, I mean, there's, no, it's not rock solid or anything like that, but. 
they had planned, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they said they wouldn't leave until we had everything we needed or until they, you know, until we got something going, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it was supposed to be like, like the, the uh, wait fest evidently was supposed to be like the going away thing, and then they was leaving. Well, I mean, that's very convenient for them to say that after somebody dies and they're all kind of scared and, you know, I mean, that, I could see them saying that. I mean, oh, well, yeah, I, we I, were planning on leaving. But yeah. I don't know why he'd do that if he was just started a new relationship with Hannah and she lived here. So, uh, well, anyway, okay, I mean, whatever, that's just hearsay, but it, it is, you know, maybe that's fact, I don't know, but it still didn't change anything in my eyes. No, it, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't do anything one way or the other, right. whether he yeah. was or whether he wasn't. You know, I, may he go, did it, so. I may go today and talk to the owners of Drake's Creek Marina and and see if they had any indication that he was planning on leaving. Why don't you let him do that? Well, uh, Jeremy, do you want to do that? I don't care to. I, I don't. I don't think it'll matter whether whether he did does or doesn't. Because if they, what what are you going to do if they get down there and say? Well, he had talked about it, but, you know, we didn't know, you know, he leaves and stuff. He, see, that job, the way I understand it, he he's back and forth with it anyways. So what if they say, well, we don't ever know what he's going to do? You know, mm-hmm. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change anything whether he was leaving or planning to leave or whether he wasn't. What about Hannah's abrupt, no notice, quitting her job at Vanderbilt? Well, I mean, that she might just be wanting to get away. I, I, I don't know. Those, those causes are after the fact, you know. Those, those are not, those, to me, they're, and those are not telltale signs that somebody's doing something wrong. Those are signs that they're wanting to distance themselves. You know, that, that could be anything from stress to publicity, you know, on the, on news or, you know, get, get, just getting away from things and just kind of stepping back from it. You, I, you I, don't wait, think... I, I don't think that she's moving there for good. Well, I, I, I disagree with you there. I mean, it may not be a sign. I mean, just, but I think it could be, it could be a sign that somebody's trying to get away or not get away, but just, I know distance themselves from it, but they're trying to distance themselves because they know something and they just, I just want to get out of here. I got to get away from this. And I, 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 is guilt the reason? I don't know. Is is that they know something the reason? I don't know. But there's some reason. I understand what they're doing. But to say that it's that's not guilt, I'm not saying that. No, but it, no, I'm, but it I'm could not, be. I'm not saying. I'm but not it, saying it's not guilt. I'm yeah. saying that there, it could be other things too. Yeah. You know, it's not just guilt. Okay. No, I, I'll, I'll no, agree. I, I'm, I'm with you there. It, it, it could be. It, it, but I, I, I don't know that, and, I, and it could be something else, too. You know, I, I don't want to say one way or the other because I, I don't know. I got you. Well, I, don't know, I don't know why they're leaving. It, just in my mind, or just when somebody's being interviewed, or you're, I'm not saying she's a suspect, but she may know something, but they always say, don't leave town, don't leave town. I just don't see how they're able to leave town in the middle of all this it just seems and maybe it doesn't as you say affect things but it just seems i it just seems i don't see how that happens and that's okay well you you, you can't stop somebody from leaving town it doesn't matter you you would have to have somebody in custody right. if they're not in custody they can do anything they want well jeremy in a court of law in front of a jury they're looking really really guilty but uh, yeah but that's circumstantial you know that. There's a, I can make anybody look guilty up there, but, you know, I have to prove my case in front of the jury. And it's beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, it's, I'm not talking about, I, yeah, necessarily criminal. I'm talking wrongful death. Oh. Well, well. well that's, you know, you'll have, you'll have a good case file, I'll say, to, when, when you, if you do anything, you, you know, you, you got a big case file. My case file is pretty, it's not as big as some, you know, and it's probably not, you know, as big as some I've done, but it, it, you have everything you need there, I think. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. For, for what y'all are wanting. Well, what, no, well, I want justice and I want the truth, but I'm not going to stop. And, and I, you know, the big alarm thing was Harry, all the information that he has to give you when you go see him today and D as well. So maybe that'll, I don't know, maybe yeah. that'll, that'll it... talk to them today and get back with us and tell us what you think. Okay. And Evan Shelton, uh, too. He he really wants to talk to you. Yeah. I don't know. I got, her, I got your email. I just got it. Yeah. Or just I looked at it. I forwarded you to your text Harry's numbers, his business card, as well as Evan Shelton's contact information. It's in your text. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got that this morning. I got um, the email. And, uh. But Jeremy, it alarms me. Lauren did not own pink shorts. Her her one pair is here. I have them, and I sent you a picture of them. Yeah. Did Could they have been white? Could they what? Could they have been white shorts that were faded by the water or something? No, it was pink. Because she, she supposedly had white shorts on. I thought. Well, Evan Shelton. But he wasn't sure. He thought when she let, he thought she had on white shorts. And he said, I know she didn't have on bathing suit bottoms because I would have noticed if Lauren Ag had on bathing suit bottoms. Well, surely there's pictures somewhere. Somebody's got pictures because that's, are there pictures of her that night in, in, or are we just barking up a dead tree here? Um, I don't know. I'm wanting to think there is one that I have that, um, in her, but I, I do know I have pictures of her. Okay. I'll say that. In oh. from pink, that night, in pink bathing suit bottoms. Yes. Oh, he says he's got. Oh. You mean pink shorts? You know, it, 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 oh, shorts, yeah. pink yeah. shorts. Yes, pink shorts. shorts. Yeah. Um, That's what I meant. Yeah, well, well, you know, even if they was Hannah's, you know, if you. If you, I don't know what size they are, if they wear the same size or whatever, but, Hannah, you know, they... they're not the same size, no. That's one thing that oh, Hannah geez. did not do. She did not borrow Lauren's clothing other than maybe, a like, a shirt or something, but they were not the same size, no. Mm-hmm. Um, Hannah was much smaller, wasn't she? I don't, I don't know where she got them. I don't... You know, I don't know if hers was dirty and they had another friend down there today you can borrow these, but I would think that would be, that would have already came out by now. If if she bought, other than Hannah, I think if somebody said, hey, if, if she had shorts on or whatever, I think somebody would have said, hey, I let her borrow a pair of my shorts because of this reason or right. whatever. Is there you know, any I, way I can see a, a, a picture of her shorts? No, not right now. But that wouldn't that kind of help with things? If if we could say those weren't her shorts, wouldn't that help? By uh, how? Well, just by that she didn't she that those weren't her shorts. Somebody maybe they dressed her after something happened. I don't know. I mean, well, Lauren wouldn't wear anything involving Hannah's lower half because she had. I mean, we know that. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, I guess you can go and do what you can do. Not uh, my daughter. Hannah had. So. They, uh, I, I just don't think that whether it was her shorts or not her shorts that, you know, it would it would make a, a difference. And, in, in, you know, like. I just don't think that there would be any, you know, if you're camping up there, you know, you could easily say that, you know, well, I just put on theirs because mine got dirty or I tore mine or I, whatever, you know, mine was dirty, so I just wore some of hers. Yeah, I I think that is, I don't know, I would disagree. I think that is, she just wouldn't do that. She wouldn't wear somebody else's shorts. Uh, she wouldn't, I don't no, think. No, Lauren was too particular. And I, I just, I think that, you know, it's, that's the difference in knowing her and, and you don't know her. So, um, yeah. but I, that's, I would think that would be a, 
a, a question. I don't know what if it's a big clue or anything, but I'd just say it's a, it's a question that would need to be somewhat answered. Uh, and I don't know how you answer it, but it just is it's something. I'm also missing a pair of uh, purplish pink denim shorts that should be in her bag. Clothes in her in there. So there's no way I can see what's in her bag. Not right now. She's also missing, or obviously had with her, a Tiffany key necklace that she wore around her neck most of the time. It is not here. It's not in her car, so I know it had to be in her purse because it was so valuable to her. Is that something you can tell us if you if it's there? Or can you not tell? No, not right now. Okay. Well, well, let me ask you this. Why does that, things like that, what, I'm just curious. Why are those important? Why are those important? I mean, that you can't even, can't even tell us. Because if there's something there or not there or something like that, and somebody gets it, they might twist that. That'll hurt a story yeah. that somebody might tell me. Okay. So you know, if, if somebody if, has if, it. If, if, if that happened, if that's a, a piece of evidence or a key piece of evidence of some sort and somebody else knows about it, mm-hmm. so if I never tell anything about clothes or if something's there or if mm-hmm. it's not there, then nobody else ever knows but me. Gotcha. So if somebody else knows about it, then it, it could leak. I'm not saying you tell anything. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if, if anybody knows, but if somebody tells me that, then mm-hmm. I know that they might know something about it because... Nobody else knows but me. Right, right. That's one of those little things you hold back so that... uh... So, Jeremy, you are still actively working this case, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. I mean, I just... When I hear what I hear yesterday, and I'm just very alarmed, and I understand you went to bed and I couldn't reach you on the phone, but I was... I had a rough night last night. (laughs) I understand. I didn't have a good one myself. So, all right. Well, just please go talk to Harry and Dee today, if you would. I will. That's what I'm fixing to do right now. Okay. So, okay. All right, I'll, Jeremy. I'll call him in the next hour, and then I'll, as soon as I get done talking to him, I'll go talk to Evan. Evan has school, I think. He's back in school. So, but I'm, I told him that someone would probably be calling him today, and he said, yeah, great. He, he didn't understand why no one had talked to him so far, so... He's expecting your yes. call. Okay. I'll, I'll call him here in just a few minutes. Okay. okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. All right. Thank You're you. Welcome. All right. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Conversation with Detective Jeremy Taylor. This is about 9, 10, uh, Monday morning, um, August 31st. How long does it take to tackle a home project? With Angie, you could cross it off your list before this ad is over. Just tell us what you need. Indoor or outdoor, repair or redesign. And we handle the rest. Sending a top pro to get it done. You don't have to lift a finger, except to tap the screen or click the mouse. Plus, Angie is free to use. So bring us your next home project and we'll bring it home. Download the app or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com to get started. Now we're going to start with the conversation with my thoughts on what Jeremy Taylor was saying to Sherry and Michael Smith. Hey, Jeremy, we've got you on speaker so we can <clears throat> both talk. Um, just uh, seemed like a lot of things happening last night that we just kind of were were getting some uh, privy to and we just wanted to let I don't know just I, I did send you an email last night that said hey go ahead and sit out I'm just sent you an email last night just about you know the guy at the boat dock named Harry Elder Elder he still said you know I know you said you talked to him but he's saying he hadn't talked to you but and maybe what he means is he's got some more to tell you. I don't know. But he's okay. got a lot to say, uh, and his wife has a lot to say as well. Yeah. 
Okay. And I will. Then, go ahead. I'll, I'll be going down there in a few minutes and talking with him. Okay. As always, Michael Smith is diplomatic and very kind to Jeremy Taylor, when the reality is Jeremy Taylor had not done his job and lied to this family, saying he did. Jeremy Taylor had not spoken to Harry Elders, a witness that was there when Lauren's body was found. Isn't it the job of the lead detective to speak with every witness at the scene, especially someone who is around the campers, Chris Stout and Aaron Lilly? Let's continue on with Jeremy Taylor, Michael Smith, and Sherry Smith. Um, also, you know, Harry was talking about, and he said, you know, again, we're just, you told us to, to call you when we find things out. And he said yes, Warren, Warren was pulled out of the water with pink bottoms on, pink swimming trunk bottoms. Well, she didn't even take swimming trunk. She didn't take pink bottoms. She had black bottoms. She didn't have pink bottoms. Um yes, don't know where she would have got those. That's a it's a real question that maybe that's something you knew or didn't know. I don't know, but I guess that's why we were so concerned with what she was found in. I think you said it was pink and, and Sherry was asking, she thought it was pink. The report that came shorts with the hot from the hospital that described what Lauren was wearing, which was a leopard bra, black shirt, um, and then pink shorts or pink pink bottoms. Well, her pink uh-huh. shorts are here at my house. So what was she wearing when she was pulled out of the water? Okay, so Jeremy Taylor told Sherry and Mike Smith to call with any information about the case, anything that was unusual or anybody who called and told them something. They were just following exactly what the lead homicide detective told them to do. Sherry Smith asked what was she wearing when she was pulled out of the water. A very reasonable question to the lead homicide detective. Let's listen to how Jeremy Taylor, the lead homicide detective in DeKalb County, Tennessee, answers this question. What the, what that says? Please pull over if you're driving your car and you're screaming at the audio. No, you did not hear that wrong. Okay, but that's, she didn't own those. That's, that's. That's a question we have. She didn't own pink bottoms, so where'd they come from? She never wore pink bottoms because she thought they made her fat. She only wore black. Every girl mom listening to this audio smiled because they understand totally what Sherry Smith just said to Jeremy Taylor. And if she was sleeping, she wouldn't be sleeping in... No, she w- if she was uh, asleep in a hammock or whatever, she would have some kind of shorts or something on because she's highly allergic to mosquitoes. There's no way she would sleep in, in uh, bathing suit bottoms. And also, I sent you an email on this too. Bathing- Go ahead. They're, they're not. They're not bathing suit bottoms. Well, she doesn't own any pink shorts. The only ones that she has are here at my in my position. I buy all of her clothes. She has no job. There's nothing she can do without me buying stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that she was found in pink shorts? That's what the, uh, all that stuff that you just read is what she had on. Well, he said she had pink bathing suit bottoms on. No. Okay. I don't know. Number one, I don't know how you'd know because he didn't see her body. I, I, he said he did see her body. He said he was the second person on, uh, that found her. Who is Harry Elders? Harry Elders was the second person on the scene. He saw Lauren's body, the pink shorts, the black top. He was also on the boat with Ryan Melanson, Aaron Lilly, and Chris Stout. I would put Harry at the top of the list of someone to talk to. Because he wouldn't show me where the body was. This is Harry Elder. I think Sherry's dumbfounded like the rest of us. She's trying to remind Jeremy Taylor who they're talking about. Yes. He, he's also the one that said this was a 10-year-old kid. Remember when the fishermen first saw the body? They thought it was a small child. That is what Jeremy Taylor is referring to. It wasn't Harry Elders who thought it was a small child. It was the fisherman. But when they called this in, this came out as a 10-year-old. 
again because the fisherman thought it was a young child because Lauren was so petite. DeKalb County has never released the 911 call. They have, quote, unquote, lost it. Right. Because you could, you, I don't mean to get graphic, but you couldn't see anything from her but the top of her torso. The rest of it was underwater. I'm just telling you what he said. He said she had on pink bottoms. Yeah. But they wasn't bathing suit shorts or bathing suit bottoms. And he, and he, if he, if he seen her, he seen her from a distance. He didn't see her out of the water. He didn't see her. He seen what, what, when the detective got there, she was still in the water. And the, and the, we have pictures of that. And it looks like a, a small child. I really can't make this up. Here he is saying it wasn't a small child a few minutes ago, and now he's saying it looked like a small child. So, I mean... Well, just go talk to him today, because he has just a totally different perspective. He's just acting like he's got a ton to say and nobody to say it to. So I was like, well, let me call Jeremy. And and so does Dee. And Dee, his wife, as well. Like everyone listening, we're expecting Jeremy Taylor to go talk to Harry Elders. Okay, then there was another, uh, Evan. Shelton. Shelton. And he he said he hadn't talked to anybody. Um, No police? He he probably has. He hasn't talked to me. Uh, If he has talked to somebody, it's not me. Well, I gave you his phone number. He wants you to call him. Remember, Evan and his mom spent Saturday talking to Lauren at the bar Fish Lips. Another witness that should have been at the top of the list. I'm not going to hold you in suspense. To this day, Evan Shelton has not spoken to anybody in DeKalb County, any official, any police, the sheriff, Sheriff Patrick Ray, no one. He just said he had a lot of information to say as well, not so much on the time that she left, but at her at her mental state when she left. He said she was she wasn't hammered, she wasn't drunk, she was fine. And I just think that's important uh, going up there. And I know the toxicology will, will say uh, s- stuff as well. So, I mean, I get that. But I'm just, it, I just thought it was important, or it should be important, that, that he know that. Michael and Sherry Smith are trying to gently move Jeremy Taylor along to do his job, to go and interview witnesses, to find out what actually happened to their daughter. Another thing that came up is that everybody has left for Florida. I mean, it is a mass exodus uh, of of Nashville, Tennessee. I called Vanderbilt this morning, and they said she... Hannah. Hannah has left. She turned in her notice a week ago and just outright quit and said that she was moving to another state. Uh, All over Instagram, all over stuff. Everybody's got trailers, and Aaron coming to meet you. That's from Chris Stout. Aaron Meach and I don't is Briggs big... posted on his Instagram, which I'm going to send to you in here a little bit, um, that said new life and he's driving uh, a vehicle heading out with them to Florida. Don't know if he's leaving for good, but that looks, you know, it just, I, I we were pretty sure that Aaron and Hannah were, and now we'd heard that Chris Stout was moving to Florida as well. And we'd heard. Well, I know Briggs. Before I play the next statement made by Jeremy Taylor, I'm going to remind you that Jeremy Taylor said he could not interview Bricks because he was on vacation. Has been in Florida. He, he was in Gulf Shores, I, yes, with his family. Yeah, I, I've talked to him uh, a couple of three times, and he has been in Florida twice, I know, that I've talked to him. Absolutely no record in the police file stating that he spoke to Bricks. Matter of fact, he told Sherry he couldn't get Bricks on the record. Right. And I, I keep telling him, you know, when you're coming back, when you're coming back, and he come back, he's like, look, man, I'm coming back then, and I'm going right back. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. I got a statement from him over the phone, but it's not anything formal. That statement he got over the phone not only is not formal, it's not in the record. Because I can't find him. But His Instagram he, uh, post yesterday said, hashtag new life. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and you said this wouldn't hinder the case any, but I'm just telling you, they're all running like scared bunnies. So, um, yeah. I, you know, I just, again, red flags, questions. Well, I do 
I do know they had some of this planned before this happened. How would Jeremy Taylor have that information? Uh, Uh, And how can you verify that? Not not, not all of them did, but I know at least one of them (laughs) planned to leave before this even happened. Before Lauren's death? Yes. Do you have proof of that or just hearsay? Bravo, Sherry. Well, it's hearsay. Let me remind you, this is the lead homicide detective in her daughter's death. It ain't rock solid or nothing, but, I mean, from the looks of things, when I went to their house, it was, they was packing. So based on what Jeremy Taylor just said, they was packing. So that's the evidence that they had this planned. They was packing. That was the next, that was the day. Yeah, the next day. After the, uh, the, the death? After the death, yes. Now, the other police officers I've spoken to about this case said that could potentially be fleeing. So, I mean, there's, no, it's not rock solid or anything like that, but they had planned, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they said they wouldn't leave until we had everything we needed or until they, you know, until we got something going, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it was supposed to be like, like the, the uh, wake fest evidently was supposed to be like the going away thing, and then they were leaving. It is really hard for me not to make snide comments, but I do want you to listen to what he just said, and it is hard. This tape is so hard to listen to, and think about it. Put yourself in this family's shoes. They have a daughter who's dead. They have questions. And the detective, his evidence of they had it planned already was they was packing. The day after Lauren's death, they was packing. Well, I mean, that's very convenient for them to say that after somebody dies and they're all kind of scared. And, you know, I mean, that I could see them saying that. I mean, oh, well, yeah, I, we were planning on leaving, yeah. But I don't know why he'd do that if he was just started a new relationship with Hannah and she lived here. So, uh... Michael and Sherry Smith are not investigators, nor are they detectives. They haven't gone through any training, but they use common sense. Now, wouldn't it be a good time for DeKalb County to use a little common sense here? Well, anyway, okay, I mean, whatever, that's just... <laughs> Hearsay, but it it is, you know, maybe that's fact. I don't know, but it still doesn't change anything in my eyes. No, yeah, it doesn't doesn't do anything one way or the other, whether he was or whether he wasn't. I may go go today and talk to the owners of Drake's Creek Marina and, and see if they had any indication that he was planning on leaving. Sherry Smith had to take this investigation into her own hands. She realized Jeremy Taylor wasn't going to do anything for them. Why don't you let him do that? Well, uh, Jeremy, do you want to do that? I have to appreciate Sherry's tone at this point. I don't care to. I, I don't. I don't think it'll matter whether whether he did does or doesn't. Because if they, what, what are you going to do if they get down there and say, "Well, he had talked about it, but you know, we didn't know. You know, he leaves and stuff." He, See, that job, the way I understand it, he he's back and forth with it anyways. So what if they say, well, we don't ever know what he's going to do? You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't change anything whether he was leaving, planning to leave or whether he wasn't. What about Hannah's abrupt, no-notice quitting her job at Vanderbilt? Well, I mean, that she might just be wanting to get away. Come on, you've got to be screaming like I am at this audio. I, I don't know. Those causes are after the fact. You know, those, those are not... Those, to me, they're, and those are not telltale signs that somebody's doing something wrong. Those are signs that they're wanting to distance themselves. You know, that, that could be anything from stress to publicity, you know, on the on news or, you know, get, get, just getting away from things and just kind of stepping back from it. You, I, you don't wait, think... I, I don't think that she's moving there for good. 
Oh, but she is. Well, I, I, I disagree with you there. I mean, it may not be a sign. I mean, just, but I think it could be, it could be a sign that somebody's trying to get away or not get away, but just, I know distance themselves from it, but they're trying to distance themselves because they know something and they just, I just want to get out of here. I got to get away from this. And I, 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 is guilt the reason? I don't know. Is, is that they know something the reason? I don't know. But there's some reason. I understand what they're doing. But to say that it's that's not guilt, I'm not saying that. No, but it, no, but it could not, be. I'm not saying. I'm but not it, saying it's not guilt. I'm yeah. saying that there, it could be other things too. Yeah. You know, it's not just guilt. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll no, agree. I'm, I'm with you there. It, it, it could be. It. it but I, I, have, I don't know that, and I and it could be something else too. You know, I, I don't want to say one way or the other because I, I don't know. I got you. How painful is this audio listening to it and hearing what Jeremy Taylor is saying to this family, knowing he has no intentions of following through? I don't know, I don't know why they're leaving. It, just in my mind, or just when somebody's being interviewed, or you're, I'm not saying she's a suspect, but she may know something, but they always say, don't leave town, don't leave town. I just don't see how they're able to leave town in the middle of all this. It just seems, and maybe it doesn't, as you say, affect things. But it just seems, I, it just seems, I don't see how that happens. And that's okay. Well, you, you, you can't stop somebody from leaving town. It doesn't matter. You, you have to have somebody in custody. Right. If they're not in custody, they can do anything they want. Well, Jeremy, in a court of law in front of a jury, they're looking really, really guilty. But, uh, yeah, but- Gosh, I just feel so bad for Sherry Smith in this conversation. It is so, so infuriating. That's circumstantial, you know. That but there's, a, I can make anybody look guilty of there, but you know, I have to prove my case in front of the jury, and it's beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, it's. I'm not talking about, I, yeah, necessarily criminal. I'm talking wrongful death. Absolutely love this next part of the conversation. Oh. Well, well, that's. You know, you'll have you'll have a good case file. I, I'll say the. When, when you, if you do anything, you, you know, you, you got a big case file. My case file is pretty, it's not as big as some, you know, it, and it's probably not, you know, as big as some I've done, but it, it, you have everything you need there, I think, hmm. okay. for, for what y'all are wanting. Well, what, no, well, I want justice and I want the truth, but... I'm not going to stop. And, and I, you know, the big alarm thing was Harry, all the information that he has to give you when you go see him today and D as well. So maybe that'll, I don't know. Maybe that'll that'll, talk to them today and get back with us and tell us what you think. Okay. And Evan Shelton too. He, he really wants to talk to you. Yeah. I will. I got her. I got your email. I just got it, and uh, or just I looked at it. I forwarded you to your text Harry's numbers, his business card, as well as Evan Shelton's contact information. It's in your text. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got that this morning. I got uh, the email, and. Uh, but Jeremy, it alarms me. Lauren did not own pink shorts. Her her one pair is here. I have them, and I sent you a picture of them. Yeah. Did could they have been well, white? Could they, they what? Could they have been white shorts that were faded by the water or something? No, they was pink. Because she, she supposedly had white shorts on. I thought. Well, Evan Shelton, but he wasn't sure. He thought when she let he thought she had on white shorts. And he said, I know she didn't have on bathing suit bottoms because I would have noticed if Lauren A.G. had on bathing suit bottoms. Well, surely there's pictures somewhere. Somebody's got pictures because that's... Are there pictures of her that night in... in, Or are we just barking up a dead tree here? Um, I don't know. I'm wanting to think there is one that I have uh, in her, but I I do know I have pictures of her. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. In from pink, that night? In pink bathing suit bottoms? Yes. Oh. He says he's got... No. You mean pink shorts? You know, it, she, 
Oh, shorts, yeah. pink yeah. shorts. Yes, pink shorts. shorts. Yeah. Um, That's what I meant. Yeah, well, well, you know, even if they was Hannah's, you know, if you, if you, I don't know what size they are, if they wear the same size or whatever, but, Hannah, you know, they, they're not the same size, no. That's one thing that oh, Hannah did not do. She did not borrow Lauren's clothing other than maybe a like a shirt or something. Thank you all for listening and downloading and sharing. It makes a difference. Lauren's family gives their full permission for any and all details to be shared in hope that the truth will come out. If you know anything at all, call 1-888-599-0008 or email tips at sheilawysaki.com.